In this video lesson, we're going to have a look at immutable and mutable types in Python. Consider this program statement here, which is first number is assigned to. And we can represent this diagrammatically as shown here. We have a box or an area of memory that's labeled first number. And if we look at the program statement, what we can see is we have an assignment statement and the two is assigned to the variable first number. And we can diagrammatically show that here as the two going into that particular variable. If we go on and look at the following program statement, what we can see here, we again have the assignment statement and the 5 is assigned to the variable first number and diagrammatically we can show that as follows we can see that the 5 replaces the 2 if you consider both of the program statements we've observed here what we're dealing with are integers 2 was an integer and 5 was an integer now you will often read in Python documentation that integers are immutable meaning they can't change but clearly here we saw that first number was 2 and then it became 5 so it kind of suggests if you've got a variable that has an integer in it then you can change it as this is shown here so what do we mean by the term immutable within Python an understanding of immutable cannot be achieved by considering the following animation here this is not how Python works underneath the hood here we can see 2 being assigned, then we can see 5 being assigned, and the 2 and the 5 are the integers, and we can see that the 2 was overwritten by the 5. What we need to do is have a different look at how variables are created and manipulated within the Python programming language. So let's have a look at this program statement here. First number is assigned 2, and we're going to fall back on the model that I've looked at many times in the previous videos this notion of an execution space and when first number is assigned to we need to realize that in Python what 2 is is an object it is an integer object and first number is the name that's bound to the integer object that contains 2 so we can represent that in the following animation we can see here that we have first number and underneath it we have a rectangular shape and we also have a circular shape now that's going to represent the object so the 2 actually gets copied to the object as you can see there and if you look at the first number you can see an arrow has appeared there now this is suggesting that this holds the address the location it references the object says where the object is in the execution space so we end up with first number and two being bound together as you can see here so first number is the name that's bound to the integer object where the integer object has the value of 2 let's now consider this program statement here which is first underscore number is assigned 5 now it may be tempting to think that this 5 is simply moved and replace this 2 here but the thing is this object is an integer object and it is immutable meaning that we cannot overwrite the two that appears at its core as I like to call it here what will happen under these circumstances is another object will be created and the value of five will be copied to that particular object now first number will receive a reference which will point to the object that contains the value of 5 and you can see I've shown that with the green arrow and of course the green arrow will now overwrite what was there before the purple arrow so we can see the purple arrow now has disappeared now the binding between the first number and the 2 is now removed what we now have is first number being bound to the object that contains 5 as you can see here so first number is now said to be bound to 5 another way of saying this is that first number is the name that's bound to the integer 5 that is we can think of a variable as a name being bound to an integer and in this case first number is the name that is bound to the integer object 5 now of course if we look at this particular object now we can see that nothing is pointing to it so under these circumstances of course this will now be 
garbage collected and it'll be removed from the execution space removed from the computer's memory so what we can see here is that this line created an integer object that had the value of 2 and first number was the name that was bound to that integer that contained the value of 2 and on this line the same name is now bound to a different integer object where this one contained the value of 5 Let's now consider what happens for this program statement here, which is string underscore one is assigned a string x, y, z. And what we will see, we will see the execution space being created, and we'll see that we will have a rectangular shape and a circular shape that I like to use to show the reference and the object. And the reference will appear in the rectangular shape, the arrow, and the x, y, and z will appear within the object. And we can see that we have this between them, suggesting that these two are bound in other words the name string underscore one is bound to x y and z the object that contains the x y and z so if we look at this program statement we say that the name string underscore one is bound to the string object that contains x y and z let's consider this program statement here it says string underscore one is assigned the string x y z now we can read this as follows the string underscore one is the name that is bound to the string instance the string object that contains the string x y z now this particular statement is the print statement and what it will do it'll print out the content of the string underscore one in other words it should print out x y z now here we can see that the print statement is going to print out the id of string underscore one now remember string underscore one will be an instance of the string class and the id is the unique identifier that's given to all objects in python when they're created so let's now consider the runtime for this computer program well the first line we know is going to create the string object and the second line is going to print as appropriate so if we look at the runtime we can see after the first print statement we will have this and you can see that the x y and z has come from the fact that this was in this position within the print statement and this number here which is the id of the instance of the string class was because of this here and we can see that indeed string underscore one has the value of x y and z and the object that was created has this unique identifier when i now come onto this line it's string underscore one is assigned the string a b c and this line is now going to print the value of string underscore one and the id of string underscore one so if we look at the runtime for this particular statement we can see that here and we can see that we have a b c for string one whereas a moment ago string underscore one was xyz so we can see that this variable has altered from xyz to abc so what's all this about immutable if you can see the variable has changed what we need to look at however is what printing this gave us it gave us this value which is the id that is different to this id showing us that right well we can see this has changed to abc but we now got a new object because the id of string underscore one appears to be changed now what this means is when we did this string underscore one was the name bound to the string object that had this id and when we went on to this line the name string underscore one was rebound to a different object that contained the string abc and we can see it's a different object because when we print its id you can see it's a different id and you can see both of these ids are different now that's because the string object the thing that the string underscore one is bound to is different because the original object which contained the x y z was immutable we couldn't change its value but the variable has been changed but remember a variable in python is a name bound to an 
instance. It's not a box into which you put a number and then replace it with another number or put a string and replace it with another string. We have to appreciate what the object orientated nature of Python under the bonnet is actually doing to understand immutable and obviously mutable which we'll be looking at a little bit later in this video. So to roughly summarize the variable has altered, but has done so by having its name bound to a different object. However, the objects to which the name are bound are immutable. E.g., if a string object contains X, Y, Z, it cannot be altered to A, B, C. But it can be bound to a different object that contains A, B, C. Let's consider this computer program here, and it's dealing with lists. Now, the first line of the program is list underscore one is assigned, and it's assigned a list that contains two, three, and five. Now, I can show this on a schematic diagram similar to the ones we've been looking at in this video so far. And we know we're going to have an execution space. And into this execution space, we're going to have the name of the list, list underscore one, and we're going to see underneath that that we have the rectangular shape, and over here we have the circular shape that's going to represent the object. If we go further with our animation, we can see that the object is going to contain the list that has two, three, and five. Whereas here, what you can see, we have the arrow, and that arrow is the reference to the object, where the object is in the execution space, and we can say that these are bound. So it's sensible for us to stick with the same terminology. We can say that list underscore one is the name that is bound to the list that contains two, three, and five. This program statement is referring as you can see, to list underscore one, index position zero. Now that is referencing this particular position within the list. And if you come back to the program statement, you can see that 11 is going to be assigned to that particular position. So what we should see when this particular program statement executes is that we have a change in the first position within the list. And let's see if that's the case you can see it is now 11. So the two that was in the list, i.e. in this position, is now 11. If I go on to the next line, you can see that we're indexing this position, which is here. And I'm going to be changing that to 13, because I'm assigning 13 to this particular item in the list, this particular element of the list this particular position within the list, depending on how you wish to refer to the list. And if you look, it's currently three, so it's going to end up to be 13. If you come to this particular one, you're indexing position two, which is this position in the list, and you can see 17 is going to be assigned to that particular position. So if you keep your eye on here, you can see that the 5 will change to 17. Now this line is a message. And what this message is saying, this is the object, and this is the method to be invoked, and it's going to append one line, i.e. 19, to the end of the list. So let's go over here and keep our eye on this, and you can see that 19 appears within the list. Now what should be clear is that the list has been altered in situ. In other words, the things that the list stored, you can see have been changed to 11, 13, and 17, and an additional one of 19 has been added, appended to the list. No other list objects have been created. This means that a list is regarded as being mutable. This particular name here was not rebound to any other list object. You were able to change the values that the list stored directly. Not only change them, but you can add extra ones to it. And that means that a list is mutable, meaning it can be changed, as you can see here. The object can be changed, because what we have here is the name list underscore one is bound to the list object. 
and the list object can have its values changed. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.